Hello, everybody. So today we're going to be building some of that combat engine that we talked about in the last episode, and we're going to start by having some floating icons over the character's head that represent how charged they are uh, with whatever their icon should be. So here we've got uh, two, two types of icons, the sword icon and the shield icon. Any given character will only have one charge type unless they're a titanic monster. Um, and so I just made a sword and a shield because uh, this being sort of the main character, I figured you could probably just switch your back and forth from an attack-based fighter and a defense-based fighter as you saw fit. We're going to go ahead and modify the battle pop-up script. So if you look at the scripts, we've got this battle pop-up, uh, and you may remember this stuff. So this consists of two pieces, the battle status pop-up and the battle status indicator. Grind, 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 grind. I think I opened it twice. I did, because it's brilliant like that. Alright, so... There we go. So the battle status pop-up got opened, but the indicator did not. That's okay. Alright, so the battle status pop-up actually just pops up the indicator. And you might remember that what it is, is on every monster, there's no indicator as a prefab. The, pre the indicator pops into existence. Uh, when you when you actually start the character up and there's some advantages and disadvantages to that uh, but that's how it works at the moment we've got a battle status pop-up that just pops up the indicator the indicator itself is only intended to handle HP and MP and in fact MP doesn't even really exist um, so what we're going to do is we are going to just take this battle status indicators concept of MP and we're going to replace that with the battle status indicator. We're going to we're going to call our um, uh, our icons MP because whatever they're going to be, uh, that we we have to come up with a name for them. And since we don't have anything like MP, we might as well call them MP. But the MP will will refer to different things for each character class. So we're still going to call it MP. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to look over here at the character. This is our hero. And you notice that she doesn't have a battle status pop-up attached to her, and she doesn't have a battle status indicator attached to her. Well, that's because, in general, it would be kind of annoying to have uh, large bars and indicators floating above her head. So we have a couple of options as to how we want to try, to try and make this um, more friendly. But unfortunately, for now, we're going to go ahead and just bull through with the concept of it being floating above her head. Later on, we'll try and come up with something a little bit more elegant, but for now that should work. Um, so to do that we have two options. We can either just put the battle status pop-up over the character's head or we can have it spawn in. Um, now the spawning in is useful in certain situations but I don't think it's useful in this situation. So let's go ahead and take a look at our prefabs. Here's a battle status indicator. Let's just drop it on. Plunk. Um, Okay, so it looks like this doesn't have its own canvas attached to it. This must predate the um, uh, the creation of the floating canvas that we did for the enemy. So well, let's drop the let's drop the enemy battle indicator onto her instead, because this actually has an in-world existence, as you can see. So if we lift this up and tilt it back, we probably don't have to tilt it because it'll tilt automatically. We can see that it's absolutely enormous. Moreover, it's not in quite the right position. Fortunately, this is quite a flexible indicator, so let's go ahead and uh, change the pieces around. We're not going to indicate our HP. <coughs> we're only going to indicate our MP. And so to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to take this HP text and make it into MP text, and the MP text uh, into, uh, sorry, and the HP slider into MP slider, like so. And then we'll set these to null. There we go. And now we need to have a battle unit reference. I think it might actually pick it up automatically if you let it, but it's easy enough to just drag it in. Come on, I know that you have a battle unit, don't you? Hmm. It looks like the hero does not have a battle unit attached to her. 
um, which is probably because I replaced the body a couple of times and didn't think to replace it. So we'll just add a battle unit to our hero. And we're going to make it so that she has uh, starting with 10 of each thing, and then we'll have 0 MP because you start empty, and we'll allow her to have up to 4. Now she has a battle status indicator that we can drop in, so I might as well. And uh, if we hit play, we should see uh, that this works, although it's going to look bad. Um, it didn't actually work right. Oh, because I forgot to drop the... There we are. 0 out of 4 MP. But this is a really, really ugly way to do it. Uh, it would be much, much better if, rather than a slider, we were using icons that lit up. Uh, and also, that would be a lot less opaque and nasty, you know? So let's go ahead and work with that. Um, what we need to do is we need to change this enemy battle indicator to be more to our preference. And that involves adding in some icons. So let's go down to our scriptable objects here. Um, sprites, there we go. We need these shield icons, but we need these shield icons in this area. Um, so what we're actually going to do is we're going to do this in the simplest possible way. Uh, and we're going to create a toggleable sprite. Now this is something that is um, useful in a variety of situations and it's also useful because it allows you to uh, do all sorts of animations or stuff but you can put it off until you need to. So in this case we're going to create a C sharp script called a toggle sprite. Here in the toggle sprite we're going to have two sprites. Let me make sure they're called sprites. Um, they may actually be called something else. When you drop a sprite into one of these guys, it's called an image. Good thing I checked. All right, so let's go add an image. Public image. Oh, we need to add the uh, UI elements here. Public image, false image, true image and public bool uh, sorry I'm trying to think of a good value because they're all all the names are taken we will call this um, hmm happy and we'll call this the unhappy image and this the happy image now that sounds a little bit random but it's actually not um, it's probably just something that most people haven't read about. There's a something called a happy and an unhappy statement, and it involves whether something happens to be true in a specific situation, but we won't go into that. Rather, we'll just use happy and unhappy for now. We'll, we can change it later. I'm still a little bit sick, so the names I'm coming up with might be crazed. Uh, anyway, this should be protected bool. Underscore happy, because when we have a public bool, we actually need to have it get and set properly. So we want it to actually pay, uh, sit there and change to the unhappy image. Uh, whew. Uh, sorry. There's a really... I'm uh, not up to snuff and there's some really obnoxious noises happening in the background but they're probably not in a frequency range that you can hear anyhow we're just gonna make it so that if value then um, happy equals value uh, if the value is true then we want to have the happy image dot uh, is it enabled yeah uh, well is there like another I, I guess enabled will work Except we can actually fix this up to have a not to not have any if statements at all. We can just say uh, happy image enabled equals happy and unhappy image enabled equals not happy, and that ought to do the same work. Um, now before I had this thing where I checked and I said, well, does happy equal the value? If so, go return. And the reason I'm not doing that is because the very first thing we're going to do is set happy equal to happy, and the reason we're doing that is specifically to initialize these images properly so that whoever is actually adding the toggle sprite object doesn't have to worry about initializing the individual images to being visible or invisible. Um, 
So now what we need to do is we actually need to create a toggle sprite, which is easy enough. We will create an empty object, which we will call a toggle sprite. Um, and we are going to want to add in those particular uh, images into it. So let's create an image. Now you see how the image comes hard coded with a size. I don't think we want that to be the case. So we're going to hold down Alt and select this button here. And that way it'll always be sized to the size of the toggle sprite. And now that's important because it allows us to change the size of this uh, however we would like. And wow, I cannot believe how obnoxious that sound is. Are these not sprites? There, sprites. Now they're sprites. So this will be shield icon empty, and then we're going to call this the unhappy. And then we're going to duplicate it. We're going to call it the happy. And this will be our shield icon full. Pretty straightforward. Now the toggle sprite, we have to add that new script we created. <coughs> and there it is, happy and unhappy. Right now you can't see the value, and that's because this is a private value, or protected rather. If we make this public, we'll actually be able to set it here in the um, here in the values, and I think that's fine. We'll go ahead and leave it public for now. Uh, the only issue is that if we happen to set underscore happy somewhere else, then it will skip the uh, fixing of these icons. Now if I hit play, you're gonna see that it switches over to the unhappy image, and if I switch this over to being happy, and I hit play, it's gonna be the shield. See? So that's pretty straightforward. And now what we're going to do is we're going to have to create an alternate version of this enemy battle indicator. Um, this isn't the enemy battle indicator, first off. And now it is the uh, uh, hero battle indicator. But we need to have a variant of this battle status indicator that understands the concept of toggleable sprites. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to cut, cut out some of this or create a variant of it uh, as we see fit. So if we open this up in our editor, we can take a look at which we would prefer to do. This is a super simple uh, set of if statements, so we can go ahead and make this a little bit more complicated. There's no particular reason to um, to descend from it and create another variant. Uh, there's, there's no reason for that because it's not complex enough for me to feel uh, awkward about it. So instead what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add in a um, uh, a new kind of thing here. It's going to be public toggle sprite and then we want to add in a uh, uh, a toggle sprite here. But the question is do we want to add in a toggle sprite fab that we spawn or do we want to add in an existing toggle sprite that has been put into the indicator and will therefore um, uh, just be, need to be duplicated. And I think the answer is it's better to keep it in the indicator. The reason for that is because these heroes, we can go ahead and swap out the toggle sprite um, without having to uh, think about it too hard. We'll just change the the, uh, the images in the toggle sprite and it'll work fine. So let's go ahead and call this a tarting, starting uh, toggle sprite. So we're going to also have to have a list of toggle sprites. So protected list. Okay, so we don't have that action available to us until we enable it. There we go. Protected list toggle sprite all toggle sprites. Here in start we're gonna say all toggle sprites dot add starting add starting toggle sprite, but we only want to do this if starting toggle sprite exist exists. I really hope you can't hear that awful noise. I don't know what they're doing out there, but it's 11 p.m. and they need to stop. So uh, when we actually have these working for us, what we need to do is we need to create a number of them equal to the MP value of the character. So let's go ahead and do exactly that. But we're not going to want to do it in start. We're going to want to do it down here in set reference. The problem is that set reference um, doesn't get called 
automatically. There's no call in start that says set reference. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to here in the starting toggle sprite thing, we're going to have to say if reference does not equal null, uh, then set reference reference. And that's something that is a little bit hacky and I don't particularly like it. Uh, but we don't want to have this so that it uh, duplicates too much of the effort involved, uh, but that's okay. Right now we're, we're going to go ahead just with that. Um, and we're going to go ahead and here in set reference, we're going to need to create a number of toggle sprites equal to the um, number of MP units that we have. So if uh, all toggle sprites dot length uh, count equals one, then we have to initialize it. For int a equals zero, or uh, let's go it this way. While all toggle sprites dot count is less than unit <coughs> dot mp max, we're going to add another toggle sprite. So we say toggle sprite sprite equals uh, toggle sprite <laughs> instantiate existing toggle sprite as it called original toggle sprite what is it called no um starting toggle sprite that's fine and then what we want to do is we want to say sprite dot transform dot parent equals starting toggle sprite dot transform dot parent and we're going to want to say um uh all toggle sprites dot add sprite now that sort of works except for we're going to have one problem that's going to set all of them up on top of each other oh and it, I didn't set it up properly uh, doot, doot, doot. there and we can delete the slider here we don't need it we don't need the text either there we go so that's going to create oh, that didn't work either um, Didn't I set the toggle sprite? Yeah, starting toggle sprite. Oh, this is what doesn't have a reference. Yeah, that'll do. Because it's protected, it won't be saved. Uh, so it's going to be generated automatically at playtime every single time. There we are, that's better. So uh, this, as you can see, not only does it throw up a lot of warnings, they're all on top of each other. Uh, so this is not how we want to do it. What we're going to want to do is we're going to want to use a set parent method, and we're also going to want to change the parent of the toggle sprite. So sprite.transform.setParent starting toggle sprite.transform.parent and we're going to want to set it to false. We don't care about the world position. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add in a little bit of trickery. So the first thing we need to do is we need to add in a layout element script here and give it a specific height and width as we would prefer. Those ones work. And we're going to want to then create uh, in this battle status indicator, we're going to want to create a horizontal layout element like so. And you can see that that says uh, expands in all the various ways that it tries to do. Uh, we don't want it to expand. But what we would like it to do is start in the middle and work its way outwards rather than starting on the left. Unfortunately, I'm not entirely sure that's possible. I haven't found any way to do that. Um, oh wait, here it is. I'm just being stupid. There it is. So there we go. You can now see that it has four of them. Uh, now the problem is that the uh, toggle sprite indicators are not actually set to our MP level. Oh, it's been 20 minutes already because I'm moving slowly and wheezing and staggering and stuff. Um, so in our next episode, I will set these up to be at our current uh, MP level, and I'll also set it up so that when we hold shift, we regenerate MP.